Okay, so talking about uh, applications of logs and then a little bit of graphing stuff. So first of all, uh, we have these two, which are uh, simple little ones. I'm going to do the first one with a little bit of help from one of you, so don't bother writing that one down, but uh, just watch as we do this one. you got to think of this as, if I could solve this part, like you through, through some property or trick or something, then it would be really easy to do that problem, but uh, that isn't going to work so well. So I need to get that part alone to be able to solve it. Okay, so to get X alone, I got to get that part I circled in red alone. Okay, so tell me something to do first. Yes, S to add six. Okay, if I add six to both sides, then I'm going to have two log base 100 of X equals one. And now what? Divide by two, and that'll get that little part alone. Log base 100 of X equals one half. Now, that doesn't look like, a, it doesn't make sense to me of what I need for x. So how could I write it in a different way? 100 to the 1 half equals x, the little circle of life. 100 to the 1 half equals x. And hopefully I can look at that and say, does that make sense to me? It does to me because I know what 1 half means. What does the 1 half power mean? Square root. So that really means square root of 100, which is? So the answer for that one's 10. Would you please use the same type of logic and solve this one? I will pause while you do. Okay, so uh, we can solve this one down to be x equals 64. And then I'd like you to check that by putting it in the calculator. So you take this and you put it in right there. And now all of a sudden you've got log 2 of 64. How do you put that in the calculator? Log 64 over log 2. And what did that come up to be? 6. So this part right here is equal to 6. And that means that 2 times 6 minus 6 should equal 6. 2 times 6 minus 6 should equal 6. That's 12 minus 6 should equal 6. And it does. So it worked. Okay. Now, the other thing you, that's nice about checking is you can go back up and make sure that your answer didn't create what kind of a solution. Extraneous. All right. Applications. The applications kind we're doing today are really easy. They're just log formulas. And then you just have to put stuff in the right place and then solve the little log equation from there. But this first one I kind of like because it's uh, about beaches. And I've been on different kinds of beaches. And uh, I've noticed that there's some beaches that are really flat, and there's others that are really tilted, they're, you know, really steep. Okay, and I've never really, you know, like I never really understood why, and now I know why. Because this formula right here is a, shows that there's a logarithmic, which means also kind of like related to exponential relationship between the size of the grains of sand on the beach and how steep it is. So you tell me, how many of you have been on one of those really flat beaches? The slope of the beach is really flat. It's almost a zero slope, which would be completely flat. Okay, was well, the sand really big or really small? Really small. It's true. How many of you have been on a beach where it was really kind of tilted? It was like really steep into the ocean, okay? Can you, can you describe it, anybody? Of course, you know I'm going to say it's bigger, but do, can you remember it? it? was rocky, okay, and that's the same kind of thing, right? If it's rocky, then that's big pieces of sand, effectively, right? So the if you go to even just like normal sand, but big, that's like in Hawaii. I remember being on this beach in Hawaii uh, that had really kind of was steep into the water, and I remember picking up a big handful of the of the uh, sand, and it was really cool because the the, pellet, the little pieces of sand were so big that you could look at it in each as like an individual little rock almost. And it had all kinds of cool colors in there, like greens, you know, emerald kind of colors, and just really cool looking uh, rocks because they were really very small rocks. Okay, so the steeper it is, the bigger the diameter is. So you could bring me a handful of sand, and I could tell you whether that beach 
would be one of those flat kind, or one of the beach would be one of those uh, steep kind. Okay, and I didn't know you could do that before. I bet you didn't either. Uh, this is the question. If it's 0.25 millimeter diameter, that means all the way across the little relatively round sand pellet uh, is a diameter of 0.25. 0.25 of a millimeter. Millimeters are only uh, the thickness of a dime, so 0.25 is like a quarter of the thickness of a dime. So that's pretty pretty small, right? That's gonna sh it should create a slope that's pretty small. I'd like you to take this and put it in. Where would you put it for D or S? D, the diameter of the sand. Pop it in there. Use your calculator. Don't need to write this all out. It's not complicated. Just use your calculator and type it in and see what the slope should be. I'll hit pause while you do that. Okay, so what if a kid thought, I'm going to figure this part out, which is this part right here, and they forget that the calculator is in base 10, right? And so they go log of 0.25 over log of 10, and they get the right answer. I mean, all they would have had to type in was log 0.25, right? Why would this still work? Because log 10 is equal to what? 1. All right. So then the answer is just still this, which is what? What was log 0.25? Do you remember what that decimal was? Point what? Negative, negative 0.6. Okay. So that means all of this right here is negative 0.6. Am I hearing that correctly? Then you take that and you times it by that, and then you add that, and then you finally get the slope. What is the slope? Point oh something. Would it round to point oh nine? All right. Is that pretty close to flat? Yep. Pretty small. This is as close to zero, and zero would be flat. So that is a very flat beach. So that's pretty small sand. All right. What happens if you wanted to have a slope of zero? A person wanted a perfect beach, as in there was no slope. Then you could just stick into this formula that the slope was zero. I'd like you to take a second. You can use this, do this all in your calculator if you want, and solve this thing for the slope being zero. See how small the sand has to be to make the perfect beach. <laughs> okay. So I would subtract 0.159 for each side. And then I would divide by 0.118. And then I would end up with some decimal is equal to log base 10 of D. And this decimal, can somebody help me with that? Point, no. 1.35? Isn't that what it is when it's all done? Is that the final, final answer? Is that the, that's, that's the right spot there? Okay, so then uh, I have to go 10 to the negative 1.35 equals D. I just wrote this using that circle of life. Okay. Final answer is whatever 10 to the negative 1.35 is. Point, is it point point zero four? Zero four four. So if you ever wanted to have the perfect beach, you now know how small the sand would have to be. But then what happens if you have sand that's even smaller than that? Don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is just one of those functions that all of a sudden stops working with a certain domain. You know how only number, certain numbers will work in a certain, some functions? Maybe this is one of those situations. As I'd love to know. I'd love to be able to take super, super, super fine particles and, like, you know, put them out on a beach and see what happens. I mean, the thought they probably just wash away, et cetera. But if you have enough of them, if the whole beach was made of that, I don't know what would happen. All right. Uh, I'm going to stop here, move on to the next topic on the next recording.